What's up guys? It's Trevor finally back with another video. I can't believe how long it's been. It's been too long and I apologize for that. But let me tell you, the past couple weeks, the start of this semester, well, it just immediately started and we all, my whole entire class kind of got bogged down with studying for anatomy and microimmunology, trying to keep up with lab work. So basically the past three weeks have been pure lecture stuff, trying to get ready for big exams and do well on those. And we got those out of the way, but in the upcoming two, about two weeks, we have a ton of lab stuff to do. So we are practicing drilling on teeth and putting amalgam restorations in. So the kind of silver fillings that um, people sometimes have. And then we are practicing crown preps. So basically we, you take a tooth and drill it to almost a miniature version of that tooth. And so you can put a crown on top of that. And also we are doing some waxing. So basically we start off with a little stub and put wax or melt wax all around it and shape it into the form of a tooth. And they have to be pretty spot on to what an actual tooth looks like. We've been really busy, but it is time to get back to making videos. And in December, I told you guys to send me all the questions that you wanted me to answer. And I got an overwhelming amount of questions and I can't thank you guys enough for responding. Once again, I apologize for not getting back sooner, but here we go. I'm gonna answer um, some of the first questions and also some questions that I thought would apply to the majority of you guys so I can help out as many people as I can. And remember, all these, um, all these answers are just my opinion, so don't take it as fact, but I just wanna help you guys out and hopefully you like the video. Here we go. All right, so let's get into the questions. Number one is from Luis Marquez, and his question is, I'm starting college next semester. I've never studied, and I don't consider myself a book smart person. I have always liked the field of dentistry and know that it is what I want to do. Do you think it's doable for a person like me? I've actually gotten a lot of these types of questions, people asking me whether um, they should go into dentistry. You know, I've got this GPA my freshman year or halfway through college, is that too low to go into, um, to apply to dental school or even other schools? Um, I did really bad in this class. Can I still go into dentistry? Is all hope lost? And the short answer is 100%, 1000%. If you want to go into dentistry and you put in the hard work, you absolutely can. There is no doubt about it. If you want to go into medical school, if you want to go to law school, farm school, PT school, PA school, it does not matter. It doesn't matter how smart you have been in the past, you can do it. So the long answer is I've actually never considered myself and I don't consider myself a very book smart person. And I've talked about this before in my past videos, but my GPA coming out of high school was average. It was, you know, a, a three, six average to get into um, college. It was a three, six, three, six, five. I think, um, I had average SAT scores, average ACT scores, got into undergrad and my freshman year was terrible. My first semester, I got a 2.9 GPA and then, um, the following semester cumulative was like a 3.1. So I barely brought it up any. And I thought that I was not going to be able to be smart enough and get the grades that I needed to get into any type of professional school, let alone a very competitive one um, like dental school or medical school. So um, after that freshman year, I really decided to basically switch my attitude towards school. Um, you know, during my freshman year, when I was getting bad grades, I think my first priority was having fun going out on the weekends, um, even going out during the week and just spending time with friends. And then I would make time to study after I had all the fun and I was already tired. So it was just not the recipe to do well in school. So after that freshman year, I switched my whole mentality. It made school my number one priority. I would get my studying done, get prepared for upcoming exams and quizzes, get all my readings done. Um, do all the get all the little points so being in class getting the attendance points um, doing all the little quizzes getting ready for those quizzes so i didn't miss you know the two or three points um, every week that kind of add up towards the end of the class anyways made school my number one priority and it really really had a huge change on my gpa so along with the change of making school my number one priority i also had to realize that it took me 
longer, almost twice as long to understand material than some of my classmates and even some of my roommates when we were taking the same classes. So my roommate would study for a test for let's say three or four hours and get a 95 on the test. And for me to get that same 95, I would have to put in, you know, six or seven hours. So almost double what he put in. But at the end of the day, we'd be getting the same grades. So it didn't really matter to me. It basically came down to whether or not I was willing to put in the time and grind um, grind studying and staying up late, uh, making all the flashcards that I needed to understand the material to get a good grade. So going back to the question, do you have to be book smart to get into any professional school or do anything you want in life? No, you do not. It helps, obviously. I'd rather spend an hour studying than two hours studying to understand a concept, but I think the main thing that separates someone that gets into a dental school and, or, and does not get into dental school is 100% hard work. So if you guys are out there wondering whether or not you can do it, you absolutely can if you put your mind to it and put in the hard work. All right, let's get to question number two. And this one comes from Corbin. He His question is, What's your opinion on taking another undergrad degree such as business commerce while taking the dental school prereqs and then applying to dental school? So my opinion on what undergrad major you should have is it really does not matter. Like honestly, 100% you could major in underwater basket weaving if you wanted to. As long as you take the prereqs uh, for dental school or whatever school you're trying to get into and do well in the entrance exam. So for dental schools, that's the DAT, right? Because if you do well in the prereqs and you do well on the DAT, the rest of your resume basically just makes you unique. So if you can do a major outside of you know the medical field, the typical exercise science um, or biology, or all those majors that, you know, the pre-meds, um, pre-dental majors that kind of everyone does or the majority of people do, if you can be unique and do something outside of that, I think that actually makes you a stronger applicant. When I actually started undergrad, I was a declared business major because I wanted to take a lot of business classes because I knew we don't get very much of them in dental school. So that would help prepare me for the day when I actually owned my own practice and I was my own boss. But I soon found out that I was not capable of taking all the difficult business classes that that major required and take all the prereqs for dental school. So I decided to switch to exercise science, which was something that I also love. Um, I love learning about, you know, anything to do with anatomy, the body, kinesiology, physiology. I really enjoyed it and it had all the dental prereqs built into it. So I wasn't taking, you know, the double course load that I would have needed to if I was doing a business major and trying to apply to dental school. Okay, question number three is from Ha H and her question is, I'm a first year dental student. I just wanted to ask if you know a way that I can communicate with other dental students. It'll be great to share information together. The best way to communicate with dental students that I know of is definitely studentdoctornetwork.net. This is a website where basically it's just a ton of dental students asking questions, answering questions, the whole community based on helping um, everyone get through dental school. And so if you are in dental school now and don't know about it and haven't read all the threads that they have, there's honestly thousands of questions that people have asked and thousands of responses to all those questions. So if you ever... Um, are in need of some help, go on there. You can post, you can read, do a ton of research pretty much on any topic that you could imagine. And also, if you are a pre-dental student, definitely go check out their pre-dental threads because that's really the only way that I learned how to get ready for the DAT. It helped me make a study schedule. It helped me with concepts that I was struggling with. So pre-dental students and dental students, if you guys aren't on SDN, go on there and do as much reading as you can. Okay, question number four is from Jackson Schaffer. Hey Trevor, I love your channel and I've been watching for a while and I decided to subscribe. Thanks, homeboy. Um, I'm a senior in high school and I'm applying to colleges and I plan on pursuing a dental school then to ortho school. What school did you attend for undergrad and what did you major in? What are some of what are some tips for prereq classes for dental school? Thank you so much. All right, Jackson, good luck with applying to college. I'm sure a lot of you guys that are watching the video are kind of in a similar situation. So let's get to the question. Um, I attended BYU in Utah. I actually graduated high school in 2010. And yes, I understand that it's 2018. I'm old. I don't really want to talk about it. 
But graduated 2010, went to undergrad in Utah, and now I am here at OSU. My major at BYU was exercise science, like I mentioned before in the video. So the biggest tip I have for prereq classes in undergrad would probably be to take advantage of all the office hours that the TAs or the teaching assistants give you and also go to the office hours of your professors. I know it's hard to kind of actually have a real relationship with a professor if you're in one of those huge gen chem classes that they have like 300 students. But when it comes time to um, getting letters of recommendation, it is so nice for that teacher to um, be able to remember you, remember you always coming in, working hard, and that is something that they will be able to talk about when they're writing that letter for you. And going back to the TAs, they a lot of times either help write the test or see the test, the actual test that you're going to take before they give their reviews or office hours. So they can direct your studying and save you a ton of time so that you don't have to um, spend a lot of time memorizing subjects that aren't even going to be on the test. Okay, question number five. This is from Taylor Barnwell. What specific things did you do in undergrad to design your dental school path a little more? So when it comes to actually the classes um, that you take and when to take them, I think the most important thing is try to take all your gen chems, gen bios, and uh, ochem courses right before you take the DAT. And I say right before, but I guess I think you can accomplish all of those within, uh, I'd say, a three semester span. So within a year and a half, you're going to build your foundation that you need to take the DAT. You're going to cover almost everything that's on it with those classes. And that will help you tremendously. When you start studying, there's such an overwhelming amount of information that if you can remember a lot of the basic um, main principles from those classes because you've just recently taken them, you're going to be so far ahead of the game, it's going to cut off, honestly, three or four weeks uh, from your DAT studying schedule. So I highly recommend trying to condense those big classes that are going to be covered on the DAT um, right before you actually take the test. So outside of the actual classes that you're going to take during your undergrad, you need to start thinking your freshman year about all of your extracurricular activities. So that's like your volunteering, shadowing, um, who you're going to get your letters of recommendation from. These are all things that take a lot of time. And if you push them off to the end, your application is going to show. And a lot of dental schools will be able to tell those student or those applicants who kind of just crammed and got the minimal amount of hours or those students that really found a passion and pursued it and that's what will make you stand out as an applicant and when it comes time to developing the relationships necessary for someone to write a letter of recommendation for you honestly it just takes time and i felt like i was almost in panic mode so about six months before I applied, um, before I sent my application and I realized that I only had one person that I felt really comfortable writing a strong letter of recommendation. And so for the next few months, I really stressed getting to know um, a professor that I was taking biochem from, even though it wasn't my favorite class at all. If you guys have watched any of my past videos, you know I hate it. Anyways, but I worked really hard in that class. Um, but I was worried that he wasn't going to be able to write a strong recommendation letter. And then um, since I was out of state for my undergrad, I didn't really get to know any dentists that were there. I did all my shadowing uh, back home with all the dentists I grew up with. So it was kind of awkward going back home and asking one of those dentists that hadn't seen me for a while um, to write a letter of recommendation. But luckily, it all worked out. So my advice to you is start developing those relationships as soon as you can. Your freshman year, maybe do research for a professor, develop a really strong bond. More than anything, have that professor see your, your character. So what sets you apart, your, your drive, your hard work, your diligence, when uh, things get tough. Those are all things that they can write about and will really, really make your application stand out. 
So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for submitting your questions a couple weeks ago. I'm sorry again that it took me so long to respond to all of them, but I hope that helped a lot of you guys. If you guys have any more questions, you can put them down uh, in the comments and I will try my best to respond to them. I'm busy with school, but I think it's really important to give back. I know I relied on a lot of people who were already in dental school when I was going through that process, so I'll try to help as many people as I can. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys guys in the next one.